Hello friends, welcome back to another in a series of tutorials for new players for 7 Days to Die on the consoles. Welcome all. So in this episode, we're going to talk about your first forge. So the forge is your gateway to all things awesome in the game. Uh, there are a number of tools that we need, um, and the forge is kind of the first one. So we're going to talk about the forge. We're going to talk about then the next step, which is kind of the workbench. And then the, finally, we're going to talk about the cement mixer. So those are the three basic like crafting tools that are currently in the game. So first thing on a forge is you need to get a few things together. You need to get short iron pipes. You need to get animal hides. You need to get some clay. And you need to get some small stones. So in order to find small, uh, small stones, you pick them off the ground. You know, they're kind of... They're kind of everywhere, or you can find a patch of, of uh, stone like this and harvest some more stone. You can find the resource rocks, which are kind of everywhere. You can find uh, stone just laying on the ground. Uh, many ways to find stone. You'll need clay, which you can easily find in the pine forest, the maple forest biomes. Um, hard to find clay in this plains biome. And my guy is starving himself to death oh look corn oh look a zombie uh zombies can carry there's there yep. and there's some clay as well so it's a little hard to spot it in this biome but there it is Burp. clay and lovely golden rod okay no oh, clay and corn now you need the animal hides animal hides come from animals that's right you gotta find an animal don't look at that building it'll fall apart and kill you uh, you need to find animals, uh, rabbits, uh, dogs, even though that's not the best place to find your first leather, uh, animal hide, I mean, uh, deer, bears, pigs, all have leather. So what you do is you kill the animal and then you harvest it with either your stone axe or if you've got it, um, a knife, a shiv, a machete, an axe of any kind, and you can harvest that up. So once you've got a short iron pipe, which you can then get from a toilet uh, or a car, you can get them in loot once in a while. Uh, you'll find them in cabinets sometimes under sinks. So you can find a lot of that stuff just kind of laying around. So once you've gathered all those supplies, the first thing you're going to make is a bellows. So the bellows is the, for, is the first piece. And for that, you need eight pieces of wood, you need 20 animal hides, and you need one short iron pipe. So let's go ahead and craft one of those. 10 seconds worth of time. And once that is done, we can do, 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 boom. Now we've got it. Now we can go ahead and make a forge, which would be under your basics. There's a forge, which requires 50 small stones, 50 clay, which is basically like a, a one full block plus part of another one, one bellow and one more short iron pipe. Let's go ahead and craft that. Only a few seconds to go for that. Now, the forge uses scrap material to uh, turn into full ingots and other components. There are certain recipes that require the forge to build. So let's go ahead and put our forge down right there. All right. And I'm going to show you how to uh, find some food here in the plains biome where'd that corn go corn 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 there we go so you can get corn and you can just bunch on that it's not it's not great but if you're in the desert and you got nothing else to eat you can survive on corn. And one thing I forgot to mention in the, in the biomes video is you can also find uh, in the snow biome, you can find uh, blueberries, which are a good source of fuel. Okay, so here's a forge. So the forge requires a few things. It's got a tools area up on top, an anvil, calipers, and a tool and die set. You've got to find these things. You can make an anvil. You cannot make a tool and die set or the calipers. These have to be found. They can be found in chests, 
from the uh, that are marked as um, working stiff tools chests, either in working stiff tools building or in gas stations. There's sometimes a working stiff tools box. You gotta loot those chests, and you have a chance of finding these two items. That itself can be crafted uh, from the forge. So what we do is you put in some fuel. The fuel can be logs, it can be coal, it can be a chair, it can be a furnace. Uh, I mean, sorry, a piece of furniture. Anything that can go in here can can be uh, anything that has a burn time can be fuel. So we'll turn that on. We're going to put in some iron, and we're going to put in clay. Everything requires clay. So basically, when you want to make now you'll start seeing recipes become available as more and more of this iron gets ingested in. You'll have a balance here of material that's available to craft from. So we need to basically wait until we have enough in there to make our first anvil. An anvil requires 200 units, I believe. Yes, 200 units of iron. So it's going to take a few minutes to get there. It'll show you that I don't have enough if I have that recipe selected. I don't have enough there. So let's go ahead and pause, and I'll wait for that iron to build up. All right, so we finally have enough iron adjusted. I went ahead and put in some brass and some lead as well. Oh, lead's cooking in right now, so you can see that as well. So we've got the anvil now available. So I'm going to go ahead and craft an anvil. Anvil is required to unlock additional recipes. So, for example, uh, the cooking pot, it'll tell you that it's got a requirement of an anvil. So we can't make a cooking pot in the forge until we have the anvil. We can't make a cooking grill until we have the anvil. We can't make iron arrowheads, iron bars. Most things require uh, that anvil in the tool slot. So let's go ahead and craft up one of those. 26 seconds from now. All right, so we just output our anvil. So take the anvil and you drop it into the anvil slot. And it'll tell you there's one item there. Uh, and now we've got all these other recipes have become available. Now there are some things you can see it's got a little icon next to them. These indicate that it requires not only the anvil, but it also requires a skill. Typically these skills are going to be under your skills window. Now for example, just to show you again here again, forged steel requires learning. So if I go into my character, oops, into my skills, um, in order to make that, we need to have, let's go through here, steel smithing unlocked. So here we go. We have steel smithing unlocked. It cost me 10 points and it also requires, uh, yeah, 10 points to do it. Uh, it gives you the ability to make steel arrowheads and forge steel. Um, same thing with a lot of things. So for example, the bullet tips, bullet casings, buckshot, all of those things require a skill point, a skill as well. So buckshot here, I've got that, so I can make buckshot. Now, sometimes like this requires just an anvil. So this this is just lead and clay. It takes two two units of lead, one unit of clay. So now I could make some because I've got some in here. So I go ahead and click. I'll give you one of those. I've got one buckshot. Um, if, for example, it's a bullet tip. Now the bullet tip requires just an anvil, lead and clay, but the bullet casing requires brass, clay, and it requires calipers. So in order to make a bullet casing, I need to find calipers. So calipers, as I said, are fairly rare. So it's going to be hard to just start cranking out tons of bullets until you get those. So once you find them, you can click them, drag them up, put them into your uh, caliper slot, and now I can craft those types of recipes. Now there's one final one that requires some additional tools, and that is things that require the tool and die set. For example, rocket casings and rocket tips. Um, so those require a little bit more stuff. So again, tool and die sets can be found in uh, working stiff tool stores and tool crates that are found around in different buildings. Drag it up, put it there, and now I'm able to craft, craft everything that can be crafted at an anvil can now be done. So again, I mentioned that everything can go in here. So you've got iron, brass, lead, glass, stone, and clay are all the units of resources that are in here. Now the glass is crushed sand. You can also put in paintings, broken glass that you recover from breaking windows, 
Um, anything you could think of that's glass, like a jar, can be ch- uh, can be chucked in here. And then once you've got the glass in there, you can do things like make a jar. So, for example, I look for a jar. I can make more glass jars. So I, now I can make my own glass jars and uh, fill them up with water and collect the resources. All right. So that is the forge. Now, if you are moving on to another base and you need to get your units of resources out of here, there is a way to do that. All you've got to do is go into your forge, okay? And you're going to want to look for just, like, iron. And you want to just tell it, give me all the iron. And it gives it to you really quickly. And then we want our brass. Give me all our brass back. Give me all of our lead back. Max it out. So now it's going to give me all the resources that I harvested and put into it. I can get them right back. There we go. So now we've got all the resources that we put into the forge, we got back out. I didn't get the the, the clay or the lead, but that's how you would do that. All right, the next uh, working workstation I'm going to show you is actually the working table. So the work the workbench uh, requires a couple of components. One is forged iron, which can be found uh, very, very rarely as a drop in a, either a zombie or a car or another chest. It requires springs, which can be harvested from stoves and uh, certain like uh, control panels in some, some industrial type buildings and uh, in cars. You need a wrench to get those springs back, though. That wrench is like one of these little guys right here. And it'll harvest those kind of materials. You can also make springs. Uh, actually, you can't make springs. Uh, you can make the forged iron in your forge. I went ahead and got some prepared for us. So in here, I've got all my bits for the workbench. I've got my forged iron, my springs, my short iron pipe, and wood. And I can go ahead and... Oops, what do I... I need 25 and I've got 22. Oh, I need a few more. So give me one second. All right, now I would be remiss in saying, uh, forgetting to say as well, that when you have a forge or a campfire running, it generates noise. It's in, in the game, it's called heat, but it's not actually like temperature, even though there is a temperature when you're around a forge. That's not the same thing, though. There's temperature and there's the heat that we talk about, which is basically the noise activity it generates, which will draw screamer zombies. Now, I believe in my, my, one of my earlier videos, you saw a bunch of those screamers show up same thing will happen here. As this runs along, it'll slowly build up that noise activity meter in this area. And sooner or later, it will summon one of those horrible screamer girls. If you don't kill them right away, they will summon some zombies. So I'm actually going to move away from that since it's been going for a while. And it may summon a zombie, which I don't want to play with right now. So we're going to go ahead and make our workbench now. So we're going to craft it up. Again, forged iron. You need 25 of them, which is quite a bit. You definitely need your forge first. Let's go ahead and craft that going. Now, the workbench is most useful because it basically can duplicate any recipe that you can craft in your backpack, in your, in your own uh, inventory, it can craft. So the nice thing is when you're doing a big build, you're able to very easily and quickly set up a bunch of workbenches, have them all doing things like building frames for you, uh, making uh, rebar, making you know, any kind of box that you could make in your workbench, they can be making it in bulk, making gunpowder, making whatever. Now, you do not gain skill when it's doing that. Um, you only gain skill when it's crafted in your backpack, so you've got to kind of weigh the pros and cons. Generally, though, uh, you're going to end up making so much stuff that you'll have no problem gaining skills on your own. Hello, Mr. Bear. You stay over there. I'll stay over here. We'll both be happy. All right, so there are workbenches ready. So workbench, again, you place it. They can be rotated around um, or just placed out there. So when you access it, you have all your same recipes that you could do anywhere else. So let's say, for example, I want to make, uh, I want to make eight campfires. Hit craft. I can walk away. I can go do other things. I can craft things in my own inventory. And then when I come back to the workbench... I can open it up and I can pull out those objects that it crafted for me. And then I can drop them on the ground. All right. 
So workbenches are a really nice kind of mid-level uh, item that you're going to be using a lot of when you want to basically have an assembly line kind of construction. In my base, I've got six of these set up, and I've got them. They'll be making gunpowder for me. They'll be assembling bullets for me. They'll be assembling uh, new frames, uh, shingles for roofs, etc. So those, they, they can, rather than me having to worry about doing it, I can just let them do their own their own business. Now, the last work table that we're going to look at is the uh, the concrete mixer now or cement mixer. So what you need first off is you need to find an engine. Now, engines can be found. Let me go ahead and find one. I should have said, let me go ahead and just get one. So engines can be found in cars. Um, I believe in an earlier episode as well, I was using my wrench on a car and I grabbed an engine out of it. So you'll need to find an intact car or one that's just barely damaged harvest it with a wrench and you'll have a chance of getting an engine. Typically I would say on average one engine for every maybe 10 cars or so. So maybe a 10% chance of getting an engine. Um, it doesn't matter the quality of the engine it does not matter in the slightest. So what you'll do is you go in and you'll look for a cement mixer. So again, cement mixer is just like the workbench in order to be able to make either of those items, you will need to have, you'll need to buy into them. So for example, workbench costs 10 points to unlock. The concrete mixer is 10 points to unlock. Okay, so you need to ha make sure you've got uh, your skill points enough so you can buy those items. All right, so what else do we need? We have an engine, uh, we have springs, we have short iron pipe, we have scrap cable. Scrap cable can be found with your wrench. Oh, we need more forged iron as well. So scrap cable can be found um, in cars. It can be found in stoves and ovens and in consoles. Uh, oh, Mr. Bear, you are just wanting to come over here and party, aren't you? So uh, I will go ahead and grab some of that stuff. All right, so let's go ahead and make our cement mixer. So 25 forged iron, one scrap cable, five springs, an engine, and a short iron pipe. Now, it does not matter, matter again the quality of the engine you use. So use your crappiest quality engine, save your better quality engines for things like an auger or a chainsaw or for um, your mini bike, which is really one of the better things to get in the game. So let's go ahead and let that go ahead and craft away. All right, should be just about done. There we go. So cement mixer does not require uh, fuel to run as of as of now at least Let's pop that down there so when you open this up it's got a few recipes that are tied to it crushed sand gravel sand asphalt cobblestone rocks concrete mix you notice again this one requires you to buy that concrete mix skill um and then ignore some ignore that one and that one those are not uh that normal things so in order to make uh, crushed sand, you just need to get some small stones. So you can tell it to make me up a bunch of these. And then concrete mix require. Oh, oh hello. Now, uh, the one thing you need in order to make that like, concrete, for example, is you actually need cement, which is made uh, in a forge from rocks. So you'll need to actually make up a bunch of cement mix uh, first in your forge and then bring it over to your cement mixer. All right, and this bear is just, bear is outlived its usefulness. Mr. Bear. Oh, I should have reloaded first. Always reload between encounters. There we go, lay down, boo-boo. Now again, when you're harvesting an animal, your, your best ch choice is to use uh, either a knife, a hunting knife, a machete, or a shiv. So you can see all this. I mean, you get a great amount of material off of a bear. So I've got now eight meat, which I don't need, more animal hides, more animal fat, which I don't need, bones I don't need right now. Buckshot, get rid of that as well. All right, so I went ahead and got myself some cement mix. So in the cement mixer, you would combine your cement, your small stone, and your, yeah, sorry, so not cement mix, your cement and your crushed sand, and you would make yourself concrete. 
Now, concrete mix is used for a variety of things. Uh, it is I, In the building video, I showed you how you can use rebar frames, and then you upgrade them with wood, and then you upgrade them with cement, and that or concrete mix, and that makes great con uh, heavy reinforced concrete. You can also just make... You can also just make uh, concrete blocks directly uh, in your inventory, or you can use your workbenches to make more concrete. Did I use all of it? No. Oh, it requires 10, and I only made 18. That's why. <laughs> I made one block. It is fairly expensive. But... If you've got workbenches set up and a few cement mixers set up, you can really crank out the resources uh, for these. All right, so I hope that helped you guys. Oh, actually, you know, before, before I do that, there's one last thing I'll show you. The campfire itself. Uh, we've talked about it, but let me show you a few more things about it. All right, so the campfire itself has the same kind of interface. You've got your recipes that it can be made on the campfire. You've got slots for different tools and your fuel area and your output area. So we've got it a few tools we've got uh we've got a cooking pot which we can put in the cooking sl pot slot this allows us to make any kind of uh i guess potted thing uh boiled water uh goldenrod tea we can make uh, corn on the cob we can make uh boiled eggs uh in the pot we can make stews in the pot stews are generally your better stuff and we also have a cooking grill the cooking grill allows us to make things like uh, uh, baked potatoes, uh, grilled meats. Um, and let's go ahead and add the last item, which is the beaker, which is a rare drop from nurses. And you can also find it in a pop and pill store. The beaker allows you to do things like make biofuel, uh, allows you to make antibiotics um, and other things. So, for example, um, I've got moldy bread in my inventory and some nitrate power which is this stuff here moldy bread you can find off of zombies let's add a little bit, a little bit of fuel to this so it goes turn that on and now i can go ahead and make an antibiotic it does take a little, few mo few moments to do that we can also make a baked potato on the grill let's cook one of those up and we can make a corn on the cob in the uh, in the cooking pot with a bottle of water so we can get those all queued up. They can all be queuing away for us really quickly. Now, again, just like the anvil, I'm sorry, just like the forge, the campfire also adds to the activity in the area. So it'll cause those nasty screamer ladies to come showing up and knocking on your door. All right, so the thing should be ready. So antibiotics, great way to get rid of the zombie aids, uh, which you get, uh, you have a chance of getting them when the zombie hits you. Um, they can't, it will kill you over days if you don't get to it quickly. So you always want to make sure you take care of it, it infection really quickly. Uh, honey will cure the first stage of it. Later on, you need antibiotics. Uh, baked potato, great traveling food, has no smell on it. So you can carry this in your backpack and in your belt and the zombies will not be attracted to it. Same with corn on the cob, no smell to it. Uh, this is as opposed to uh, stews and meats, which have a smell and will draw the zombies to you. All right, so that's it for our video on video tutorial on the various crafting stations in Seven Days to Die. If you guys have questions, let me know in the comments below. Tell your friends, your family, and your grandmas. Share it with everybody who's just starting to play this game on the consoles. Let them know this is how to do your stuff. And I'll see you guys back here for the next tutorial episode. Bye-bye.